or fundamental forces that affect flight. The syllabus there is fairly um, prescriptive. First one is lift. As you know in an aircraft, because the airflow is like that, that is the direction the air is travelling. Newton's first law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Lift is going up in that direction. A little bit forward, um, but definitely up. Planes get sucked up in the air. Let's talk about drag really quickly. There's two forms of drag. There's profile drag, which splits into form drag and surface friction. The other form of drag is vortex drag. Vortex drag is when the plane flies through the air, it creates tornadoes or vortices behind the aircraft. They're a function of how long the wing sees the air. The faster the plane goes, the shorter the time the wing is cutting through a given package of air, which means the vortices decrease. So the faster you go, vortex drag goes down. These tornadoes that it's producing tend to go or tend to um, decrease in size, which means the less turbulence you create, create behind the plane, the less is sucking it back. Profile drag, form drag, surface friction. Form drag is just basically the size, the shape of the aircraft, how much it interferes with airflow just to make it move through. Faster you travel, the greater the drag. Surface friction is kind of like a car. Let's look at this as being a car surface down here. If that's the paintwork, if it's nice and clean, cleanly polished, or a ship that has been polished and cleaned of any barnacles underwater, the water base or the air, the fluid, just glides along the surface, creates minimum turbulence at the surface of the craft, car, airplane, whatever it may be, and decreases the drag that's holding it back. If, however, it's got a rough surface like this one, the air in there, there's our boundary layer, it's a lot thicker. And in there, there's a lot of air turbulence. To make that air turbulent takes energy. That energy creates drag. Once again, that's proportional to the speed or goes up with as speed increases. It's actually speed squared. So, you don't need to know the maths. You need to know there's two forms of drag. Profile drag is the shape, how much it disturbs the air, and how smooth the skin is. Vortex drag or induced drag is a function of how long the wing sees the air for. We'll talk about drag later. As you can notice, it's the third shirt, third tie, which means I've recorded this over three days. Somebody's pointed out something that I missed, so I'm just going to quickly edit it. Rochford, page 75, talks about induced drag, parasitic drag. Induced drag is the vortice drag, resulting from production of lift. Why? Because as you know, low pressure above the wing, high pressure underneath, results in the air slipping round the outside of the wings, which then continues to turn, makes the vortices, wingtip vortices. That is induced drag. As I said, the strength of that vortice depends on how much time the wing sees the air. The faster the plane's going, the less it is the induced drag. So that is induced. Parasitic drag is the drag from moving the plane through the air. Form drag, boundary layer drag has two parts to it. Um, spoken about it just beforehand. That increases as your speed increases exponentially. And when you add the two together, you end up with Total drag, and you have a minimum amount of drag at a design airspeed. That's what an aeronautical engineer does, understands, works with that. Some of them even design the airfoils appropriately. Final thing, thrust in the syllabus is forward force. Gliders don't have thrust. So not all aircraft have thrust. We talk about internal combustion engines. 
I'm going to cover this in detail later, but internal combustion engines only go to about 10,000 feet up in the air. Above that, there's not enough air to run them effectively. Turbofan is your standard jet engine. We'll cover it in detail later. But that works by sucking in huge volumes of air at low pressure, getting enough to burn fuel. Ram jets are hypersonic jets, Mach 3, Mach 4. They have no moving parts. They slow down the air inside the engine so it is running at a speed where the fuel can actually burn. Because oddly enough, fuel can't burn if it's travelling three times the speed of sound. The um, flame's already gone before it catches fire. Scramjets, they have not ever commercialised. They have not ever gotten anything working successfully. I read last six months ago that the Russians have just developed a plane that will travel at eight times the speed of sound, or was it a missile? They've, traveled, they've developed an object that will travel at eight times the speed of sound, which is basically what this one is. Supersonic combustion ramjets. We are talking pie in the sky, NASA military grade stuff here. Hasn't been commercialised to the best of my knowledge, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I don't know about. Turboprop is stick a jet engine on a propeller. You can run at higher speeds and higher um, altitudes because it's jet engine driven. And rockets, as you know, it's just straight thrust. A lot of you um, played with the air rockets in year nine engineering. You know what thrust is. And wait, I won't insult your intelligence. The only thing I will say even though I said that lift goes here, and the centre of lift is one third of the way down the wing. The centre of lift on a wing is about one third of the way back. Lift, as far as the technical definition, lift is at 90 degrees to the axis of the aircraft, always. Weight, oddly enough, always points down. Thrust is along the axis of the aircraft, drag pulls it back. Final thing, if I now draw my free body diagram with the plane at an angle, this is a space diagram. Lift is there. Weight obviously still points down. Drag thrust.